my first question is what is unmotivating perfect so so that's a very uh, interesting and very important question that you have asked and uh, this is also something whenever i'm giving a presentation to any group uh, be it uh, really the top institutional guys uh, be it the students uh, this is where we start from and uh, as you as we uh, as you as you as you know that uh, the easiest questions are the most difficult to answer <laughs> 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 so what is algo trading if i uh, ask someone that what is algo trading most people will say that okay it's high frequency hft you're doing a lot of uh, sending out a lot of orders and doing all those things some people will say that it's all automation no right. automating all the trades right, right. uh we are automating everything some people will just say no no it's just about just uh, creating systematic trading systems more creating models using statistics or that so it's quite confusing right. and to be honest uh, if you try to look at the definition for algo trading in right. different jurisdictions so if i am looking at um, the us jurisdiction the finra will have certain definition of it right. if i look at uh, the uk or fca uh, definition of algo trading they have a different definition india cb has a different definition right. some people say if you do complete automation that's algo trading right. some people will say if you are just doing part automation just creating a model you you using some algorithm mm -hmm. to create a system mm -hmm. create a uh, algorithm but even though execution is not automated that can also be called algorithm yeah. Yeah, right india sebi defines it very simply if you are sending out orders in an automated way without any manual intervention that's algo trading okay, okay. Wow. so that's wow. what you stick with yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> so whatever regulator says for that jurisdiction that's what the right word okay right. So, uh -huh. so so that's that's algo trading but um, what are all these other things that we keep on hearing then so let me let me let me uh, let me give a brief uh, uh, one minute uh, thought on that so yeah. first thing is algo trading okay but before that we need to understand something called systematic trading okay. what is systematic trading so systematic trading is where you are saying that i am not doing a discretionary trading okay i'm not trading at my own discretion but i am creating a model i am creating a set of rules which will dictate what to buy when to buy when to sell how much to buy how much to sell all those things are being addressed by a system okay that's your systematic trade it's regardless of whether you are uh, coming to those decisions by looking at the p by a ratio or you are looking at mscd of technical analysis or any chart and patterns whatever you are looking at it's basically what the if it is given by a system right a system not necessarily this computer system but a system of process it's uh, it's systematic trading so right? Nikesh, then why are we limiting our discussion to trading only because systematic could be applied for trading for investing also absolutely that eventually it's a rule driven data driven methodology yes. which helps you to take decision absolutely okay, so algo trading not necessarily so are we using algo trading in a very loose way that it's trading trading Algo actually could lead to investment also. Of course, there are a lot of firms which do use algorithms for investments. Okay. There are big hedge funds who use algorithms, very complex algorithms also for doing fundamental analysis. Wow! Okay. Friend, this is a big uh, revelation. Typically, we use algo for trading, but uh, it's a very big misconception. Algo can have application for investing also because data, as much as data is available on trading to play with. If not more, data is actually available in fundamental to play with. Absolutely. So fundamental, and there are a lot more things which will probably, uh, if time permits, we'll definitely love to discuss. But uh, but yeah, so you can actually look at systematic trading from the systematic investing point of view, trading point of view, anything mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So that's your systematic trading. Now, in systematic trading, when you are using computer programs to create certain algorithms, which will help you generate the orders. Or generate the signals mm -hmm. which you will trade mm -hmm. using automated system or semi-automated systems or manual system. So we are saying that we are using algorithms. So now we are entering the realm of algorithmic trading. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are looking at algorithmic trading, when you are using algorithms, we typically, in most cases, but not necessarily, as I said, that you can create algorithms for the technical analysis-based systems, right? So using technical analysis or for fundamentals. So all of that can be done. Right. So you can use algorithms for all of that, but generally, in most cases, people use algorithms for statistical processes. Okay, when you are using mathematics and statistics for the algorithm um, for creating those systems, that's called quant trading. Okay, 
what is con trading now one another big confusion big question which comes in from a lot of people is that okay here is a uh, con trading but con trading i'm using statistics in technical indicators i'm using indicators i'm using maths some bit of maths over there as well right so that's con trading or not con trading what is it right it can be con trading mm -hmm. it depends on how you're doing it Right. If you, uh, so picking up a word which um, Vivek used uh, uh, initially in the conversation, hypothesis. Mm -hmm. If you have a hypothesis, no matter how it is coming in, and if you are testing it using set statistical processes, then you are talking about quantity, right? So it need not be that, okay, MSCD, I'm using MSC, MSCD, so it cannot be quantity. It can be. But with the model that you have created for MS, uh, using MSCD, how is, how are you testing it out? How you're validating the hypothesis, how you are creating the rules to generate uh, signals, trade those signals, that's what makes it whether it's quant or not, right? So that's quant trading. And then we have a specific subset of algo trading, which is high frequency trading. So high frequency trading is where you're sending huge number of orders, like uh, a typical, I'll give an example basically, I think that will help. So a typical HFT desk, a uh, reasonable sized uh, HFT desk, uh, say in India, would be sending about a few million orders a day, okay? Uh, they will be trading few 10,000 to few 100,000 uh, uh, trades they will be doing a day, right? So they are doing all of that. What it means is that you are sending huge number of orders, you are changing them very, very frequently, you are um, holding them for a very short period of time, you're churning a lot, all those things resonate with High frequency trading. Okay. In high frequency trading, you need very solid infrastructure, very high uh, technology to make sure that your latency, that's a word for how much time it is taking to do a process, mm -hmm. right? So how much time is it taking? So if you, you need a very high end infra infrastructure technology for that, but that's not what all algo trading is about, right? So that's a very specific subset of algorithmic trading, high frequency trading. Okay. And when you are automating everything, that's what we call automated trading. So all HFT strategies have to be automated, but not algo trading or quant trading strategies need to be or need to be automated. Oh wow! So um, just to revise this for some of our users, uh, at uh, high frequency trading is typically when you trade very very frequently. So that's why it's called high frequency, and it is a domain of specialized people who are into that high frequency business because they have an expertise of both quant as well as technology. Yes. HFT is a very technology intensive because there is something called latency. To connect with the exchange and to get faster response from the exchange, that's what we call latency. So these are specialized people who do high frequency trading, right? And the other form of trading, which I can say it's a low frequency trading, which is more quant oriented, where the whole process may not necessarily be automized, right? Absolutely. Because I'll just add my two cents into coins, yes, you yes. just said. I went to US yeah. and Canada in 2010 just to uh, understand how things operate there mm -hmm. when we started our trading desk. And I met a couple of firms there. One of the firm, there was a guy who developed a very interesting quant model. Mm -hmm. And friend, this is very important for you to hear this. His quant model, was based on the color of tie of CNBC TV anchor. Okay. Can you beat that? So his model was, it was back tested by him for a period of two to two, two and a half years that whenever the color of the tie is X, market used to react in a certain way. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I was trying to figure out that what is he trying to do? Is he trying to suggest that the TV anchor is suggesting something to the audience and market is taking feedback from his suggestion? I don't know. But the point you mentioned that anything could be expressed in the term of quant. It could be price, yes. which is typically technical. It could time. be fundamental. Yes. It could be color of tie. Yes. It could be weather. Anything can have an impact. Yes. But your hypothesis has to be very defined. Oh uh, yeah, hypothesis. That's defining the hypothesis. But uh, now it will become a quant-oriented strategy if you are able to validate that hypothesis properly. Right. I'll, I'll give another example. Uh, I had this um, uh, hypothesis that. In 2010, 2009, 2010, there was this specific moves in Euro USD which used to happen, which got almost same as what Nifty used to be. So the last four digits of uh, a Euro USD will be similar to what the levels of Nifty were. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally uh, spurious, it's totally random, but it was what it was at that time. But if I were to, and I did, check to the hypothesis to validate it, 
it's not going to work, right? So it, you will not be able to uh, prove anything uh, using proper uh, uh, validations. And of course, it broke in a few months. So that's it. Yeah. But it was fun. <laughs> yeah, Investments in the securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.